Shalom, Booker Tov, everyone. Rabbi Eric Solomon, Raleigh, North Carolina. It is Labor Day, the day established well over in the 1880s to honor and to bring to the fore issues around labor, and particularly, you know, people who work with their hands, people who work, you know, specific. And um, in general, really, the effort to, oh, there we go, to unionize. It hits close to home to me, both as a rabbi and someone who takes the Torah seriously, and also as the son of two public school teachers. So let's just talk a second about the Torah. So in Leviticus 19, 13, there's a powerful verse, Pesuk, that says, you shall not oppress your neighbor, lo tashok drecha. You should not steal, not rob. And then she says, you should not hold back the wages of a laborer until the morning. And that's just one of numerous mitzvot and commandments in the Torah, which talk about specifically the behavior that one who is hired a laborer should treat them properly, not hold back their wages. Essentially the basis of moral behavior when dealing with someone who is under your care and really under, under your employ. And that is really the root of Labor Day. If you know some of the history of it, during the Industrial Revolution in America, you know, laborers, many of them living in cities, many of them immigrants, like my grandparents, were oppressed working in, you know, sweatshops and clothing industry, we used to call shmata industry, and doing work that had, with owners that treated them incredibly poorly. And there are infamous events of fires and dangerous things and people, child labor, all kinds of oppression. So Labor Day came as an effort to support unions and really protections for workers. Now, I recognize that today uh, there has been corruption in unions over the years. Uh, unions, specifically here in North Carolina, are not particularly popular. I think our state here is one of the least unionized in the state, according to what I understand. And I, I understand the tension. I, I'm not saying unions are perfect. Uh, individually, you know, there are issues. But um, unions have protected my parents as public school teachers to provide them uh, proper, respected, you know, protections, legal protections in times of challenge. And a story I've told before, but I want to share here again so everyone can hear, is that when I was maybe nine, ten years old, uh, my sister a couple years younger, my mom who taught, in a, for, taught her entire career in public schools over 30 years, maybe actually closer to 40 if I think about it, I have to count it, um, one day walked into school. She was at a school near our house. We grew up in Columbia, Maryland. It wasn't there. It was in Anne Arundel County. It was a very large high school where she, one day she walked into the front of the school and over the, like the entrance of this very beautiful building, like the entrance lobby of the school was a uh, spray painted Solomon is a Jew. That's all it said. And I'll make a long story short, because at the time when my parent mom came home that day and my dad insisted she tell us about it, she just started crying. And I didn't understand what's going on and why is, and then when she explains his Psalms of Jew, I didn't actually understand at first, I was somewhat young, why that was a problem because we were very proud to be Jewish. I didn't understand why. I understood they put on the sign. I, I was kind of graffiti sounding, but I didn't get what's wrong with that. Like, why is it bad? And then my dad explained to us that when this person, whoever it was, put Psalms of Jew, the word Jew is not a source of pride. The word Jew was like a cuss word. And as the first time I'd ever heard that, I didn't understand that that was, anyway, why I bring that up at this point, because it eventually got cleaned up and the principal was fantastic. And the, eventually there was, they found the perpetrator of their long journey. It's, but that's not the focus of this. The focus of it is when that happened, the union of teachers in the state of Maryland came forward immediately. He said, not only are we going to get rid of this, we're going we're gonna to address it. We stood up for my mom and for all teachers that were facing any type of discrimination, oppression, vulnerability, threats, whatever. And that is what unions do, is unions stand up for the worker to make sure that those who employ the worker will stand up where that person is, person of color, a woman, Jew, whatever, immigrant, to say we will not tolerate being in any way oppressed. Now, again, the school handled it perfectly. I, you know, I have nothing against it, but his, the reason, one of the reasons they handled it perfectly is because of years of union work and labor work to ensure that the school would handle it, handle it well as well as the moral behavior of those particular leaders, of course. But that's what unions and labor does, is it protects people. And to this day, you know, my parents were never, uh, they worked very hard in public education. They loved it, they did it for service. You know, My mom you know, would tell many stories about 
the work was not just about teaching, it's about really helping young people, many of them going through very difficult life circumstances. And she did out of a love, you know, of, of the kids and helping them in their lives. Uh, many of them we, we get to know over the course of, of their careers. Um, they never were paid, you know, you, as a public school teacher, you're <laughs> never going to make a killing, right? That's not how it is. Everyone understands that, not that they should be paid more, but that's what it is. Um, but there were one of the things, for example, my mom was able to get as a public school teacher was long-term care insurance provided for by union, pushed for this to be an option provided for students. And now my mom, sadly, some of you know, struggles with Alzheimer's disease. And that long-term care insurance is critical to her care. My parents do not have uh, the resources just to pay that out of pocket um, for the care she receives. But that's because she was part of a union. And for years when you work and serve, the idea that you have certain th benefits is at some point in your life that you'll gain because you gave so much service. It's the same thing for people who work in the military, people who work in other, other capacities of labor. And the last thing I'll say about this in this pandemic is think about the people who deliver. You know, we've heard a lot about Amazon delivery, UPS, et cetera. At the, they are literally providing life-saving things from PPE to other things that people can't go out and get, Instacart, you know, can't risk yourselves. These are the modern form of the laborers. And when we read stories about how they are oppressed, they can't take breaks, it's hot in their vehicles, whatever it may be, um, the issue around labor is still alive, that we should not hold their wages till morning, that we should be pro treating them properly because they really are part of the life-saving source of our society. The Torah makes it very clear. So I bring this up to say that Labor Day, yeah, it's the end of the summer, in this wacky summer. Please, God, I hope you enjoy some of this day, have a special day with your people you love in your circle. But also take time to understand what Labor Day was about. Labor Day is about honoring those who work very, very hard, since risking their lives, and want decent protections to make sure that they are not oppressed. And that is what the Torah is so key on. Not oppressing people just because they do work that for whatever reason, we do not necessarily pay the highest in our economics, but we does not, and never gives the right to oppress. Okay, so a safe, sweet, meaningful Labor Day. Bokertov.